Oh, come, let us worship God and bow low before the God who made us, for he is the Lord our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, coming together as God's family, we gather to celebrate the Eucharist. We gather mindful of our need for God in our lives. We come as a people of faith, as a people of hope, trusting in God's loving care and mercy. And as we come, we are aware that we are in need of God's forgiveness, of God's pardon, of God's love. And so let us first and foremost take a moment to acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, Did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, you shall not eat it or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food pleasing to the eyes and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. When they heard the sound of the Lord God moving about in the garden at the breezy time of the day, the man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The word of the Lord. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Then I acknowledged my sin to you. My guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. For this shall every faithful man pray to you in time of stress. Though deep waters overflow, they shall not reach him. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. You are my shelter. 
From distress, you will preserve me. With glad cries of freedom, you will bring me round. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Alleluia, alleluia. Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by the way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ear and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephetha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed. And he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist this morning, we gather to hear this beautiful gospel where Jesus speaks and this man is cured. His speech impediment is taken care of. He is able to hear. As we gather here this morning to celebrate this Eucharist, we come in a sense to ask God to do the exact same thing with each of us. We come to ask our God to open our ears, to be able to hear the voice of God. We come to ask our God to help us be able to discern in our lives that voice to be able to hear that voice of the Good Shepherd who calls out to us constantly, especially in the midst of difficult times, especially in the midst of struggles. The Good Shepherd, my dear brothers and sisters, calls out to us. God wants us to be able to hear His voice But that's not enough. As we see in the gospel just proclaimed, Jesus not only allows that man to be able to hear, but also to be able to speak. And that's God's invitation for each of us. That we, my dear friends, may be able to speak and share God's message. That everything that comes out of our mouth be for the greater glory of God. That everything that comes out of our mouth be to share the good news. The question, perhaps, that we can ask ourselves this morning, when we speak, what comes out of our mouth? When we speak, do we speak with God in our mind? 
Do we speak and share the good news? Do we speak and build up the kingdom of God? Or do we not? When we speak, do we build up that kingdom or do we tear it down? As we gather here this morning, my dear friends, we come as a people of faith, as a people of hope, trusting with confidence that our God wants us to hear his voice, that our God wants us to be able to listen to the voice of the good shepherd calling us all by name. And that that God wants each of us to go and to share that message, to be able to speak that good news each and every day of our lives. May we ask the Lord this morning to help us hear his voice and always share his message. Amen. And now we stand. And trusting in God's providence, we present him our petitions. That the ears of Christians everywhere may be opened by God's grace to his saving word. Let us pray to the Lord. That civic leaders may be guided by the Holy Spirit in their efforts to protect life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who suffer from addiction may find healing in Jesus' merciful touch. Let us pray to the Lord. That members of our parish community may grow in faith, hope, and love through God's providence in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord that the faithful departed, especially Carlos Carrillos B, for whom we offer this Mass, and all those who have gone before us, may be freed from all sin and may rejoice in the vision of God forever. Let us pray to the Lord for all those who are sick, especially for Scott Walker and Alberto Falcón, for our special intentions, Blanca Vega, who celebrates her birthday, for the eternal repose of David Guardemana, and for all those prayers which we hold in the silence of our hearts. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Faithful and merciful God, hear the prayers we offer you this day, for we offer them all through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Amen. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> o Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Osana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Osana in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of our mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be consoled. Blessed are they, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will have their fill.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear food for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Before the final blessing, just a brief announcement. Uh, this morning we will not be having adoration after Mass as we have a funeral uh, at 10 a.m. this morning and we have to make sure that the church is sanitized after this Mass. We will not be able to have adoration um, this morning. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Have a blessed Friday.